I went on a visit here and a tour and it was, it was really interesting to see how everyone talked about the campus and the community and everything here and I think that's really what ended up bringing me to Clemson was just seeing the community, how everyone was involved, all the clubs, all the organizations and just how happy everyone was here. I fell in love with the Clemson family, I felt a strong sense of community here and I felt like I could find a new home here in Clemson. My mom is an alumni, so um, it was, honestly, if I asked myself in 10th grade was I going to be at Clemson, would have been a no. Um, I wanted to do something different, you know, kind of maybe go out west or something like that, but I got here, came for my academic visit, um, loved it, loved the people, loved my tour guide, loved some of the professors that I got to meet, some of the students that I got to meet, um, and then um, the opportunity of athletics came in the picture um, with track and field. Both of my sisters actually went to Clemson, so honestly by the time it got to me I felt like I had already been part of the Clemson family for ages, um, so it really wasn't a question of where I wanted to go. Um, honestly, if, if I had to pick, I'd say my decision was pretty much made the first time I went to a Clemson football game in Death Valley. Um, I watched DeAndre Hopkins touch a touch, catch a touchdown right in front of me in Death Valley, um, and I was sold. Pretty much everything, the atmosphere, the feeling, the people, all of it. I wanted to see what it was like. I knew the football team here, and then I came to visit. I liked it a lot, and I decided that I wanted to try something new. Opportunities the bioengineering department offered, whether that be career, opportunities or research opportunities, as well as the Peer and Wise program, which all the other schools that I was currently looking at at the time didn't have a program that catered to minority students within the STEM field. I uh, first understood, learned about Clemson to, uh, through CU ICAR, and then through that I uh, met some professors from the mechanical engineering department. And then I learned that how uh, the research program is very strong in the mechanical engineering department and how collaborative the research is. I wanted to do automotive related research in the future. So I searched online and read the states, uh, the universities in the states by their capabilities in automotive research. And I found that Clemson University was really high on that list. I always knew that I wanted to go into a good engineering program. Um, I didn't know exactly what kind of engineering I wanted to do. Uh, Clemson was a really good place where I could explore some options um, at a strong engineering school. I heard that it was a great engineering school and my mom and I decided to come down and visit. And I immediately fell in love with the campus. It's so beautiful. Um, I wanted to stay kind of close to home. I'm from Kentucky so I can go home for a weekend or a week but it's not too difficult to get home. I really like to be outdoors and there's mountains and there's the lake and other schools I was looking at were in the Midwest, so it's like all cornfields, and Clemson, everyone was like so happy and smiley, and then they had a really good program, and the mountains were really close. Where I'm from in Texas, it's very dry, yellow, and uh, the appeal of Clemson is definitely the nature and how immersed we are in our surroundings. So here at Clemson, uh, I'm a material science engineering major, but also I'm a chemistry major. And within both of those fields, Clemson works really well interdisciplinary uh, between the two. So I work with two groups here at Clemson, one in MSC, I work with Dr. Colas on uh, bio-inspired materials based on butterflies. And then in chemistry, I work on single crystal growth with Dr. Colas. Currently, I do research in the bioengineering department under Dr. Delphine Dean, where we focus on HIV, AIDS, and drug testing. The summer before my freshman year, I worked in the Eureka program um, through the Honors College. So I worked with Dr. Thompson Mefford um, in his lab, and we were synthesizing magnetic nanoparticles for biomedical applications. My sophomore year, I was involved with two projects that we actually helped host in the Clemson Immersive Space here. Uh, I helped lead one of those with Dr. David Lee in the School of Architecture. What we did was we partnered with Habitat for Humanity and their homecoming build that we have here at Clemson University. Um, we created a virtual reality representation of that build so that people walking through the half-complete build at homecoming could see what it would look like when a family actually lived in there. I am working uh, in the uh, frame laboratory, which is under supervision of Dr. Garrett Pataki. So the frame laboratory stands for Fracture and Mechanics Laboratory. In this laboratory, we are interested in finding the mechanical properties of a wide range of materials, and also we want to tie them back into their microstructure. I've worked with Dr. Jeremy McCurry in the lab of orthopedic tissue regeneration. I started out working on our projects for full herniated disc repair. The most research that I've done was when 
uh, was with Dr. Smith's Big Data and Machine Learning, um, and it's taught by her grad student, Ben Sheely, and I did it for a year. I've been involved in a creative inquiry project with Dr. Kevin Tafe for a year, and our big project right now that I've been involved in is microbial load in the operating room. I've been look looking at plastics in beach sediment in Curacao, which is a small island off of the coast of Venezuela. So I've been looking to see how the plastics change through depth, see if they're more abundant or less abundant as you get deeper in the beach sediment. I've been working with Dr. Alexander Pollan on detrital zircon geochronology. And so we take these microscopic crystals, zircon crystals, and we date them to identify where the dust is coming from. And so we're studying dust in southern South America to identify how the climate has changed over time to better identify paleoclimate and climate models. I was uh, able to travel with Dr. Pullen and another uh, advisor, Dr. David Barbeau, out at uh, the University of South Carolina, and we were able to travel to Argentina to collect more samples. We flew into Mendoza and then traveled all along the northern part of Argentina, all the way over to the Paraná, and then back over to Mendoza. And it was about 3,000 miles in 10 days in a car with the three of us, just driving around, collecting about 320 pounds of uh, sediment samples. And so it was, it was a lot of fun, it was a lot of driving, but it was an, an incredible experience that I got to have. My freshman year, I was able to travel to Nicaragua uh, with Engineers Without Borders. Uh, we were helping this community called El Serrano. It's about six hours south of Managua in the countryside of Nicaragua. And our project there is to help them get a, clean, a new clean water source because they don't have enough clean water during the dry season. And so I was able to travel there on one of our assessment trips where we were trying to map out an area for drilling a well. And it was really cool. We got to meet with the community and talk with them. And we got to walk all over and find the best location for a well. And the next trip that went down there ended up drilling the, drilling the well and getting them water. So it was, it was pretty cool. My sophomore year, I traveled to Germany with LCM, um, and that tour was intended to help us gain better insight into maybe some of the historical origins um, of the Lutheran denomination. Um, that was a great opportunity you know, to see a different country and also have the experience of traveling as a college student that maybe I won't get you know, once I'm actually in a career and traveling for business, um, just being able to see a place up close like that. One summer, I went to Switzerland to do an internship at their version of NSF, and that was really fun. The Student Athletic um, Development Program partnered with this nonprofit called Build On, and Build On um, provides educational services to some of the rural villages in all over the world. And so our location was Senegal. So we went over there, stayed in the village for about, I believe it was seven days and six nights or something like that. And we literally built the school from the ground up with picks, axes, and shovels, and literally making bricks, <laughs> um, <laughs> stirring the cement and the, the gravel and the water, um, and sleeping in huts. Um, so we had the cultural experience and I wouldn't trade it for the world. I would say Ms. Lisa Jackson here in the Peer Wise office. Um, she has been my supervisor, a mentor, you know, like, kind of like that old school feeling of just having a second mom on campus and that's what she is in every aspect of my life. There's been a group of women who run the Peer and Wise program that have been the most inspiring to me throughout my academic career here. And that's mainly because all the opportunities that I've been granted so far has been through them. And um, I'm very thankful for them in my life because they have been like second mothers to me. They always look out for me and take care of me, as well as my mentees that I have in the Peer and Wise program. The most inspiring person that I've worked with is my advisor, Dr. Alex Pullen. Um, he's really been a helping hand over the past year and a half, you know, showing me along the research process, working me through how to present, how to put posters together, just the basis of science. I would say Alan Swords. Um, he taught me English comp and rhetoric my freshman year, um, but really it was the way he taught the class. So he taught it based on things that we were all interested in. Um, so for example, Clemson football, which really spoke to me. Um, so that was a way for him to get us really interested and get more out of the experience. My advisor, Dr. Pataki, is the most ins inspiring person because he's not only knowledgeable in the field that he's working uh, on, but also he's very supportive of the students. Dr. Winslow, so she is very involved in the Honors College and was a sociology teacher, so she's uh, one of the directors think, of the Honors College and then director of the National Scholars Program. and. She's just been a really great 
advisor for me. Dr. Lazar, she's one of my research mentors for the, this project and she's really pushed me to pursue a master's degree, really been supportive in my efforts and calmed all my concerns I've had with that. I think I'd say Dr. McCurry. He's been uh, just super helpful and inspiring the whole time I've been here. Um, he's always uh, He's always there to talk. He'll make sure that I understand everything that's going on and that uh, we kind of work through problems together. I think the most inspiring person here uh, I've met is Dr. Yun Yijia, my supervisor. Um, he's been inspiring me in two different ways. Um, the first is that uh, he's, he's a long-term inspiration. Uh, he's teaching me how to do research work. And the second way he's inspiring me is that being bold about research, research ideas is actually a good thing because that made, that made us try to, try to challenge the boundary of the knowledge we have. It's not a one person, it's everybody, all of the students at Clemson and all of my peers. Um, it's definitely been a huge influence on me. Um, I want to be a teacher, so all the opportunities I've had here to teach and to help my peers, that's really been a main focal point for me. Some of the most inspirational that I have met have been the students that I've worked with. Um, so the virtual reality club, um, there's always students coming through that are you know, very driven and um, are, you know everyone's trying to find their careers I guess and what where their skills might lie, um, where their career interests are. Well, the biggest part of my Clemson experience here um, or single event would be when we were able to start the Clemson immersive space. Um, so the Clemson Virtual Reality Club was started up, I helped start it up back in February of 2017 uh, when I was a freshman. Um, and that was, I was still very much, you know, getting into campus and trying to understand what role students could play, um, maybe how things were different from high school. Um, so that was the big catalyst, I think, was the moment when we received funding for the immersive space. A thing that I'm really involved in here on campus is hackathons. And so those are 24 hour or 36 hour invention marathons that happen at universities all over the world. Um, so I helped start up the one here at Clemson University my sophomore year um, and I've been running it for the past three years. The study abroad trip that I took to Curacao in Puerto Rico, that was a great two-week trip. I got to collect my data for my senior research project. It was a close-knit group of kids that went. I really got to go closer to them and the professors that went as well. My field work that I've done both in Argentina and the, the field class that I took over the summer at the Wasatch Uinta Field Camp where I finally started applying everything that I learned. Being a mentor to incoming freshman students in the College of Engineering, um, it's been an opportunity that's allowed me to see students come in not knowing a lot and seeing them grow. It's a project that we have been working on in the past two and a half years. And that project was uh, supported by Doctor, uh, by uh, Department of uh, Energy. And uh, um, that project was a was a really good was a really big project. Uh, it, uh, in that project, we need to um, modify two existing normal vehicles so that uh, turns them into uh, automated driving capable vehicles. Getting my master's uh, from Clemson and participating in the graduation ceremony was a very good feeling for me. And also passing my um, PhD proposal that was also another. Uh, uh, feel of full fulfillment. I'm a part of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, which is my sorority, and so having the opportunity to join that sisterhood um, has definitely been, I guess, outside of academics, definitely the best highlight of my career here at Clemson so far. I joined a sorority called Alpha Omega Epsilon at the beginning of my sophomore year. It was a a professional and social sorority for women in science and engineering. So it's been a really great experience getting to know all of these really inspiring people um, through my sorority. Working for the Clemson football team in the Applied Science Lab, um, which we call Castle for short. And Castle uses sports science technology to analyze players' recuperation and performance, um, which is definitely right up my alley. Um, honestly, the best part about it is that I get to go to work every day in a program that I love and admire. Um, and that's infinitely more rewarding than anything else. My dream, this is my, my dream dream, I would love to work for a sports team of some kind. But overall, just sports medicine, I want to work, you know, engineering better mechanisms for players, um, recuperation, performance, recovery, all of that. 
and I want to make an impact. You know, I want to combine my bioengineering degree with something that I'm really passionate about, you know, my enthusiasm for sports. I'm hoping to go work at a lab in a research hospital. Um, right now I'm talking to a couple of labs up in up at NYU in New York and I'm going to find other labs as well. After I graduate, I hope I can get a research job position in a, a research university or in a national lab. I am going to graduate school for a PhD. Uh, I haven't decided where yet, but right now I'm looking at Santa Barbara and MIT. I want to pursue a PhD in bioengineering and focus on global health initiatives and resource poor areas. I'm planning on going to grad school after this for a data science program and hopefully I'll get a little bit more of a sense of what I want to do from there. In the next coming months it'll be interesting to see how that all shakes out but I'm, uh, I'm excited for the opportunities that have been presented to me so far with my graduate school. So I'm looking to learn more about like GIS and geospatial science, get more into the technical side of things and then relating that back to my geog geology degree and then using that to look at earth and environmental problems. I plan on going to medical school um, and so my degree will be in bioengineering and so definitely want to go into pediatrics. That's my heart. I love kids. Um, and so after pediatrics, maybe a fellowship in orthopedic medicine. I've built up um, a, a good knowledge base here in virtual reality and I think this is technology that's going to change the future. So, so my plans are to do software development in the field of virtual reality. Right now the plan is to go work for um, a company called Samsara out in San Francisco. After graduation I'm planning to look at uh, R1 schools and try to join as an assistant professor in uh, one of the R1 schools to be able to teach uh, the courses related to my field of study and uh, also be able to have my own research group and lead and mentor undergrad and graduate students there. 